Welcome to a special edition of the Hank Unplugged podcast with Hank Hanegraaff. Hank is currently in the hospital undergoing an allogenic stem cell transplant and has been documenting his journey through a series of Facebook Live recordings that you can find on Equip.org, the Bible Answer Man YouTube channel, and the Bible Answer Man Facebook page. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page to ensure that you never miss any content updates from the Christian Research Institute. The following is the audio from Hank's Facebook Live recording on June 11, 2019, recorded just prior to receiving stem cells from his son, Paul Stephen Hanegraaff, in an allogenic stem cell transplant. Hank has since received the transplant and is doing remarkably well. He, along with his family and the rest of the team here at the Christian Research Institute, so very much appreciate your prayers for Hank and continued support as you stand shoulder to shoulder with us in the battle for life and truth. Well, another update from my room at Carolina Medical Center. This is uh, D-Day for me, or probably more correctly, the day for me, Victory Day. It's Transplant Day. My son Paul is in a room at uh, Levine Cancer Center and uh, his stem cells are being harvested. They're going to get at least six million. I probably already have them by now. And he's milking it for all it's worth. Like yeah. He's really, really, you know, really suffering. But anyway, my son Xander, my youngest son, I probably should have got his blood because he's a genius. Oh, I'm not a genius. <laughs> yes, you are. At any rate, we had a great time this morning. Xander and I did a little Bible study. I was finishing the Gospel of Matthew, and uh, we got to Matthew chapter 28. And you'll recall that this is when the disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him. And then the text says, but some doubted. Now think about this. They're seeing the resurrected Christ on the mountain. Jesus is appearing to them, and yet some doubted. And I guess that's emblematic of the human condition. We so often doubt, uh, even in face of all the evidence. Sometimes when we go through difficult times, when we go through the exigencies of life, it's, it's so easy to doubt. And I suppose I could find myself in that situation this morning. Will the stem cell transplant work? Will I live? Will I die? But if you have your faith in the Lord, whether you live or die is inconsequential. If you live, you can serve him. If you die, you're absent from the body, present with the Lord. And I was sharing this with uh, a couple of my sons uh, yesterday. I was sharing this great passage from Hebrews chapter 12, and maybe I'll share it with you as well. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your own blood. And have you forgot that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons? My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord, or loathe this reproof, for whom the Lord loves he disciplines even as the son in whom he delights. And I think about that so often. I've shared with some of you over the course of my cancer from 2017 on, one night, very late at night, I got up and I wanted to read Psalm 119, but I flipped open the Bible to Psalm 118. And there my eyes lit upon the passage that says, you will live and not die and proclaim the works of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined you severely, but he's not given you over to death. And that's what the Lord does. He disciplines those he loves. Again, 
My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. For whom he loves, he disciplines as the son in whom he delights. Well, a little off course here, but we were talking about Jesus on the mountain. Some doubted. And then Jesus came to them after they worship him. And he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age. You were baptized, Xander, mm-hmm. right? You're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What does that mean to you? That means that I am a complete union with Him. That I am... A, I am every, every Sunday, because I'm in a congregation, I go and I partake of a little bit of Him through His like, blood. So, yes. Shoot. Yes. So... And that's the cool thing, actually. What you're saying right now is the really cool thing. Every Sunday, you partake of the Eucharist. You're partaking of the pure body and precious blood of the Lord. And so you have the blood of another running through your veins, right? At this point in the conversation, a technical glitch occurred, halting the recording for about a minute. During that time, Hank's son and stem cell donor, Paul Stephen Hanegraaff, entered the room. The recording picks up amid Hank's engagement with Paul. Anyway, he's my donor, and they harvested six million stem cells? Yeah, roughly that much, and it was very dense, so they didn't have to do it very... uh, The process was very quick because of how much my body just overproduced. It was probably the Lord doing that on purpose, but he definitely was kicking my butt in the process. Right. So we're talking to Xander. Xander was explaining what it meant to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you partake of the Eucharist. What does that mean to you? I mean, in in essence, you know, it's the partaking of the divine energies of God, and in every sense of the word, like, I irk and long for taking that whenever I am not able to. If I'm out of town, if there's not one available, it's not like it's a hindering thing for me to not have it in a sense, but... Um, it, it's just you long for it. You long for the precious. You, you still long for to do the good things that you do and to do the great works of the Lord, but um, it just it, it feels like it fills a void that you don't otherwise have. Yeah, and I was thinking about the analogy. I haven't really thought through the analogy perfectly in my mind, but we have the blood of the Lord. We think about that as the real presence of Christ. It is a memorial, it is a remembrance, but it's more than that. We believe that this is the body, this is the blood of Christ. How that can be, we don't know. We don't try to explain. It's a mystery. Uh, using a Latin phrase, it's called the mysterium tremendum et fiscinos, right? The mystery that causes us to tremble and yet attracts us. Now, I I was thinking about the analogy, and maybe you guys can help me think through this, but so there's an analogy with what will happen to me in just a few hours, right? Because what will happen to me is I'm going to get your blood. Mm -hmm. So in uh, an hour, maybe two hours, I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, your blood is going to be transfused into me, and so I'm going to have the blood of another person in me. And it's going to take over. And in some way, there's an analogy there. I don't want to state it incorrectly before I think through it, but there's an analogy for the blood of Jesus Christ coursing through our veins when we partake of the Eucharist, the real presence of Christ. And, and now you're giving me the chance at a complete healing, which is what I'm praying for. A complete healing, but I'm really not praying for a complete healing as much as I'm praying that the Lord's will be done, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to continue to serve Him in ministry and uh, be there for my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, but ultimately I want the will of the Lord to be done. We were talking about the Great Commission, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age. And I was thinking about that, Xander. We're, on the one hand, we are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. 
But Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10 tells us that we need to be imitators of Christ. It's not just believing right things about him. It's becoming his imitators, right? And so we have to do those works that imitate the works of the Lord. Yeah. What do you think about that, Xander? Well, yeah, it's through grace on a good account of your works. Your works show that you have good faith. Yeah, so our works don't earnest salvation, but they are works that are done. And James talks about that. He says, a man is not saved by faith alone, but by doing works, right? And then he gives examples in the Bible. You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abram believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. And then he gives the example of Rahab who hid the spy. She had faith and she was justified by her faith. So James concludes, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. If we have true faith, we will become imitators of Christ. We'll become Christians, imitators of Christ, those who bear the sacred name of Christ upon their lips. So, uh, But that doesn't mean we're perfect. No. It just means... That's right. In fact... Striving. Yeah, and you know what, Xander? That is a great point, because that's true even in eternity. We'll be created good but not perfect and what that means is that we will continue in eternity to learn and grow and develop albeit without error as forever we explore the goodness and grace of god his created handiwork there'll never be an end to exploring that and you think about the marvels of the technologies of transplant surgery mm -hmm. that your stem cells will graft into my bone marrow is just amazing. I mean, that's something we couldn't have conceived of 50 years ago. Uh, but now it's become a reality. But all of these things are understood by the Lord. And this is one of the great solaces I have as I go through the transplant, is that the Lord created my inmost being. He knit me together in my mother's womb. And so I can praise him because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. All the days ordained for me written in his book before one of them came to be. So, well, we could go on, but I can certainly face the next few hours and the next few weeks, if the Lord grants me that time in the next few years or decades, with total peace, uh, total confidence, with not an ounce of anxiety, because I know in whom I have believed. He created my inmost being, and so... Uh, I am consecrated to him. I'm looking forward to going through this with my son as I, uh, we're going to have a little ceremony here. Paul's going to hand me his stem cells in a bag, and then uh, the, the stem cells will be given to me, and then they'll be infused in my body. And actually, there's an interesting process where there's a graft versus tumor effect, where his blood will fight whatever remaining cancer I might have in my body. Uh, so it's just an amazing thing. I, uh, I I thank God for this precious moment, for this experience, for Xander this morning uh, going through um, the Bible study with me this morning. Uh, it's such a blessing to have uh, children that love the Lord. I'm always amazed. Um, I'm only pointing out Xander because we had the Bible study this morning, but I'm always amazed at the depth of his understanding of Scripture, how much he has gained. And the other day we were witnessing to someone, Xander, we are having dinner with someone, and you said about why you're a Christian. Maybe you can explain that. We are talking about the Lord. We are explaining answers to questions about biology. And, and then you said if it were not for your upbringing or something. Yeah, if, if it wasn't for, if you don't teach the Bible correctly now, or if you don't teach how it's true, atheists will kind of tear down your view. 
Yes. And uh, if it wasn't for dad or my upbringing, I don't think I would have the level of understanding. If I didn't understand how to read the gospel and really understand it and to defend my views, I wouldn't be as knowledgeable as my dad's taught me. Beautiful. <laughs> David has been a, a rock to me. His, uh, his love for the Lord, the depth of his understanding, um, his commitment to the Lord. Do you have anything to say, David, about your faith in, in Christ in this process and uh, kind of watching the whole thing take place? The biggest thing is to just consistently rely on um, the community of believers uh, uh -huh. and, and prayer. Uh, I think prayer has become the many an empty platitude uh, where you say that you're praying for somebody but you don't actually do it. Uh, and when you take prayer seriously, uh, I don't know that we have a stronger tool in our spiritual tool belt. Uh, There's direct communion with the Lord. Uh, and uh, the, the biggest thing, uh, that since the beginning of the process, I remember when you were first diagnosed, we went into your office and we prayed. And uh, you could really feel the Holy Spirit's presence, and I know that we talked about that this morning, that I feel two things that we often overlook that are some of the most powerful things in our human existence are prayer and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, our mm -hmm. temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad you said that too, because it reminds me to thank from the bottom of my heart on behalf of myself and my family, I'm so grateful for the prayers of God's people. Uh, they have encouraged me and strengthened me. People so often say, I'm praying for you, and as David just so well articulated, it can be an empty platitude. Oftentimes you say, oh, thanks. Well, believe me, I, I do not take the prayers of God's people lightly. I'm deeply, deeply grateful for the people from all over the world that have contacted me and let me know that they're praying for me. I don't feel like I deserve the kind of attention that I get. I, I truly just receive it as a gift from the Lord. And I hope in some way uh, today I've been an encouragement to you. Uh, that's why I'm doing these videos. As, as we all face those difficulties in life, um, we never get away from them. I often say life is one challenge after another. We never get rid of the challenges. It's a matter of learning to deal with the challenges effectively. And, uh, and we can do that by God's grace. God's grace is sufficient. He often gives us His grace, as I said before, at the moment we need it, and oftentimes not a moment before. Yeah. So it has been a privilege to share my life with yours today. I thank you for your prayers as the transplant process takes place in the next few hours and uh, the blood of another takes over, my factory gets shut down and another takes over. We pray that the Lord will mightily bless this process. He is in control of every single molecule in my body, every single molecule of Paul Stevens' blood that he's gonna be giving to me soon. He's in control of everything, and, and uh, to God be the glory, great things he has done. I think of the great song by Horatio Spafford, when peace, like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Thanks for tuning in, and may God richly bless and use you, so that when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, he will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, I'll give you many things, Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.